What's up ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, welcome back to another episode of my Hungarian Let's Play. We just finished a war off against the Ottomans where we took a small amount of uh, territory from them. But we also managed to break Lithuania's ties with Sweden and uh, hopefully make them a completely free and easy land to grab up in the future. Speaking of complete free and easy land, our next war is going to be against Tunis, I believe. And uh, interestingly, we're barely losing any money anymore. If I did manage to uh, actually reduce my army maintenance, we would be making some profit. I'm hoping that we can make some profit from these wars. If I did manage to pay off some loans and pay off the interest, we could be making some profit. We do have some overextension, well, a lot of overextension, actually, considering we also took Krakow, which was released from Poland, either by rebels or by a peace deal. Uh, so with that in mind, we're actually probably making quite some money whilst uh, we are not overextended and rooting out that corruption. So hopefully, once again... Our empire has been in such a massive amount of debt, uh, like we have been in the past. And I'm kind of hoping that uh, we can pull our way out of it, hopefully this time, for good. Obviously, the economy, uh, economic issues will be a thing of the past once we do manage to pass the revoke. Even if we were uh, in a terrible spot, we would be able to pull ourselves out of the ditch because I'm sure we would make tons and tons of money. I'm going to add this to the to uh, our trading company, guys. So we now technically have a trading company, although it's pathetic and weak. Uh, as we gain influence over the Sevilla trade region, that really uh, gains influence um, in uh, the Ivory Coast. So it'll be interesting to see if maybe like uh, one smooth war against uh, Kong or something like that, we can get a good trading company down here. But reducing the unrest by adding it to the trade league is a pretty good move in my opinion all right we're going to lose some legitimacy and loyalty here but all the legitimacy skyrockets up pretty quickly yep so i think it's time to go soon uh to war with tunis okay taking oh this province is farmlands hopefully we defeat them I was about to say taking a defensive battle, but it doesn't mean very much, does it, in the farmlands? I might go ahead and just consolidate that down to size there. I don't like operating with such few troops, but yeah, geez, especially with the Russians being so close. So close. We can always support loyalists again at the cost of money. Uh, but going to war nowadays actually caps our relations off to 200, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Can tick up my military for negative 5. I don't think there's any real incentive or reason to do that, though. We're okay. Now the Ottomans have managed to accept the printing press. Let's have a look at it here. Yep. Alrighty. We're going to have some Ottoman rebel stacks. Are they both Ottomans? Yes, they are. Alrighty. I'm going to go pick up some uh, troops and fly out to Africa and uh, hopefully overextend again, I suppose, in a somewhat timely fashion into North Africa. Truce is up with Brittany. I wonder if we could get a claim. Doesn't look like it. Um, how large is... Tunis. We took his one really high developed province. He's actually under 100%. I'm not sure if he's under 100% overextension though. We'll have to review that. But this is going to be satisfying for me. Hungarian Maghreb is going to get on a whole nother level. And uh, I'm looking forward to expanding into the Iberian Peninsula when Archus comes up with Morocco shortly in a couple of years. I wonder if the name will change to, to Hungarian Spain or something like that. Iberia. As we uh, begin to colonize, I suppose, uh, the Iberian Peninsula. 
I'll leave one stack over here to help manage rebels, I suppose. And he's near these provinces to help manage those. Which is progressing fastest? Zephyrite, dudes. Zephyr I always say Zephyrite, dudes. I don't know. I have no idea how to say that. Zephyrasian. Zephyrasian. No idea. These damn Far Eastern Europeans, these Slavic names. No clue. I would like to state up Sicily. Uh, however, we got some war exhaustion, and yeah, I kind of don't think it's priority. It's not like there's a center of trade there. It's going to cost quite a bit. The development is fairly high. I will put it off for now. Although it would improve our economy if I did it right. Mm. Maybe I should do it. Just thinking about my economy and I thought I would just check my visors there to see if uh, we had like an army maintenance advisor or something. So I can take military and, dip and uh, deploy points. But I don't think there's any need to do that. Going to declare here on Tunis. Let's do it before he makes an ally, I suppose. Now, thanks to our ruler trait, we are still slowly losing war exhaustion while we fight this war. And his capital is here. Oh, very small garrison out on this province. He's got only 7,000 troopies. Very few units. Converting North Africa to Catholic at a pretty uh, substantial rate feels good. And we're at three stability. So how about we take some, uh, start taking some mercantilism from the Pope? That's one way to slowly improve our economy. We're not a very strong trader. But in the future we certainly will be. I'm going to use my claims here on Lithuania to try and get as north as possible closer to the uh, Livonian order and the blocking out the empire in particular Prussia from expanding yes yep our relations with Russia are capped when we declare war but I'm barely pulling off the liberty of this situation dude god dang it man this guy's such a bastard. Trust is an issue, but that should be going. That should be improving over time. It's a small issue. It's relative power. Yeah. So really, maintaining more troops is the way to go. Um, as much as it pains me, guys, I'm going to raise my war taxes. We need that money. We need some kind of income. And if we're making like twelve ish, that's something. This is what I'm talking about. I mentioned this last episode where we expanded the Ottomans and he just expands himself at a faster rate. So he's, I mean, he's such a breeze, to be honest, if we really just focus him out. I've been focusing so hard on the Prussians, trying to weaken them. In the future, the Ottomans will be nothing to us. I'm not worried about it, but it's just a pain, is what I'm trying to say. It's quite surprising. Hopefully Tunis has some money to be had, guys. No, damn it. It's nothing. Oh wow, we can do the full annexation. Wait, that's not this island. Let's check that it's everything. We can. It does. Uh, it is affordable. Cool. Hungary is certainly going to increase in size. I kind of don't like that change, guys. Back in, you know, I'm not sure when they did change it exactly, but um, you used to be able to add the whole the whole of the old world to the empire, which a lot of people didn't know. I sort of had a debate about it on one of my streams a long time ago. People were saying, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You can't add like this. There's not even the button. But the button would actually spread if you make a land bridge. Um, anything in Europe has the HRE button. And as soon as you leave Europe, it doesn't. But the button just appears. It, it still now even appears when it neighbors. So this is technically Asia, apparently. Or it's outside of Europe, let's put it that way. But it... um. The button appears, but 
now it literally says you cannot add anything that's outside of Europe. Um, you used to be able to make a land bridge, and what that meant if you had a colony here or you just expanded down into Africa in general, you used to be able to add it all, or if you joined your colony to your land bridge, you used to be able to add it all. But we cannot add Africa any longer, which is a shame. I think it's a shame. That is kind of a nerf to the empire. You know, if you're trying to work the HRE, but you can only add Europe to the empire when obviously a lot of Europe is already going to be inside the empire because the empire is the strongest nation in Europe. If you guys feel me. I, I did manage to kind of exploit that in the past. The fact that you can add Asian provinces and so on. Portugal has a 28 year old. Interesting. If he was older, I'd probably try to get a Hunyadi on his throne. In other news, guys, a couple of episodes ago, we uh, we we got a Hunyadi on on the Spanish throne, and it looks like it's it's on there for good, which is pretty interesting. Did I say Spanish? I mean Swedish. Excuse me. Um, that's pretty cool. We did have the opportunity to truce break and force a union over him, but. We're barely managing the liberty desire of our Russian as it is. Um, we're actually getting pretty near being able to integrate Russia, guys. And a part of me kind of feels like I might do it, like, ASAP. It's 1614. I wonder, we'd probably have the first admin efficiency, I'm not sure. But anyways, he has so many provinces to add to the empire. If it took like 10 years, for example, I, I don't really know how long it would take, to be fair. That would be 1624. Perhaps, I mean, it's pretty soon-ish, guys. Perhaps I haven't passed this yet. And that would probably mean I could pass it then by adding all of the uh, Russian provinces. We needed about 70 more, if I remember correctly, around that range. And... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's it there, for sure, easily. Considering we'll also have more of Lithuania and uh, Turkey by that time. Oh, I also got a uh, another Diplo slot recently. I'm going to accept Turkish culture when we have an abundance of Diplo points. Yay, speaking of Diplo points, 15 for free. From a cheeky event. Uh, as we do have some Turkish land already, but um, Turkish is just such a it's just such a large culture. Let's put it that way. You know, geographically it's quite big, but a lot of these provinces are nicely developed, for sure. This is a nice wealthy region, and we do intend to own it all directly. One option we have, guys, is to... Oh, I almost just pieced that out, but we got to wait for this to core up. I hate it when I make that mistake. We could take some corruption. It would improve our economy if we stopped rooting out corruption. And, um... Yeah, I knew that would happen. A Livonian order annexes Pomerania, which he would return. But I think we're going to leave him with it and uh, I'm going to push my way out here I'm going to take it convert it to Catholic and then just return it via the return province tab without even coring it up and that way we'll have a little Protestant uh, Catholic guy there uh, yeah and if he is I'm not sure who it will return it to to be fair, am I return it to the Teutonic Order? Hmm. Actually, because it's Prussian culture, that probably won't work so well. Yeah, it gave it to the Teutonic Order. That will do. That's fine. I, I don't think that was going to work out, guys, because when we returned, I, I'm pretty sure that's kind of proof right there. 
if I used the return button, it would have just gone to the Teutonic Order, who's already Protestant. So I'll just bring it inside the Empire. Might as well. Not that fast. That's a pretty uh, non-event right there, because both uh, Pomerania and the Teutons are both uh, heretics. 71 over extension. So if we had 29, we could get away with it. Going to be chilling at war here for quite some time. Alrighty, one of our colonists fi colonies finally finished. Um, yeah, this is we're spending money on this. We are spending money on this, but hopefully it will be worth the investment. Well, I definitely know it will be worth the investment. It's just that spending money when you're poor is uh, usually not the best thing. Not the best way to get out of that debt. These loans are completely massive. But if we start paying them off, our economy will improve further. That's why I'm tempted to take, like, one corruption. But it's it's only, what, six, seven? It's only seven. That ain't too bad. That ain't too bad. My biggest concern is that Russia gets liberty to desire again. And then we have to, you know, increase our force limit or uh, pay them off by supporting some dudes. Oh. Theodoro is a tributary. We could deploy vassalize him very easily. This is something I've been looking at during the kind of breaks. I just don't have the diplo slots at the moment. I've been thinking I could feed him to Russia, guys. But like I said earlier, I'm kind of feeling like I want to integrate Russia into my country, and he's already big. He's already big. Wow, Tab formed Persia, and they did it, like, naturally themselves. That's pretty crazy. Uh, unfortunately, he's he's kind of stronger than I would like, but he'll be nothing to a, to a G once we are the HRE. Oh, we can get a good look at Ming now. Yeah, dude, Ming's beast. Why the hell... Was he an invalid rival there for some time? That seems weird. We did tick up really far ahead of him. That's the main thing that we had on him. Probably at some point we ticked up ahead of him. At the moment he's tick 14. We're 15. I'm thinking about crushing him. So I'm just considering military tech. Definitely have better military. Thank goodness he's got a 1 in military. That's nice to see. And his air does too. Beautiful. Because I foresee a big war against Ming in the future, guys. Obviously, if you attack him directly, you don't have to deal with his tributaries. Now, I have very little experience in this patch, guys, but I know he's a total beast. Um, but I think the main thing about him is that, you know, if you attack his tributary states, then he backs them up. That's kind of the downside. That's what a lot of people don't like. But if you are able to just take him on directly... Uh, it's not that big of a deal, right? And I'm pretty sure he can... The Ming... The Ming Plosion can, uh, come around... Fairly easily. Ah, 26? 26? That's 97. Got him. Okay. War Exhaustion is looking pretty good. Spending our admin at a nice, efficient manner. Expanding, conquering the world. Again, Maghreb looks sick. Loving it. This is pretty cool. Ah! Let's fish for some Diplo reputation. Guys, I can't have Ming. I can't have Ming support. We can't give him the opportunity. It will. I wouldn't go so far as to say it will ruin the game, but it kind of will. Like it will wrap us into a war if he declares independence. That that is just a huge waste of time. Uh, so the, the reason I hate doing that is it costs so much money, man. But we have to stop him. It's, it's priority. I'm looking for a. Um, that's what I'm looking for. But he's plus two. It's cheaper though, isn't it? God dang it, dude. Barely. 
I don't see any rebel factions. We're good on our admin. I'm going to turn my maintenance down here, guys. Try to make some money while we can. I guess we're going to be at peace for a little period. Uh, Army tradition is 87. It's pretty good, but it's decaying quickly. And we're slowly continuing to gain relations with him. Obviously, it's we're, we're basically maximum overextended. That's one thing that contributes to him being so mad at us. Truce of Morocco is up. Mali won't back him up. Jeez. But he is at peace. Oh, man. I can't wait to go down to West Africa. Like These guys are going to be so free. Most of them are really far behind in tech. Uh, we got quite some time here. Just going to be chilling at peace. Try to make some money, man. Try to make some money. Goodness. We'll be making more money as we uh, core up our territory. There's no hurry in terms of our... Uh... Yeah, it doesn't matter if Mali even backs him up, dude. We'll just crush him in a battle. Yep, there's the rebel faction. Ottomans, unsurprised about that. I'll try to take a defensive in the woods if they spawn there. I should check out... Yay! Reputation! Let's get rid of this guy for now. We're barely hanging in there. Royal match from Trier. Wait, did you change government type? Ah. Alright. Oh, 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 oh. An elector's gone. Well, that's all right. That's all right. We're losing anyway. Doesn't matter. That's good. That's good. Can make it ourselves. Who was it that disappeared here? I feel like the Platinate is under a PU of uh, Bohemia. He might get integrated. Ah, ah, it was Pomerania, of course. Pomerania was a elector, if I remember correctly. Uh, that's fine. We just must make a, a Catholic elector. Could do it to Tuscany. I'm pretty sure we could get Tuscany. Wow. Well, he does hate us for our aggressive expansion, though. I feel like he's a pretty good elector, though. He's certainly not going to be converted. There aren't that many choices. There aren't many Italians. Uh, Milan could be annexed at, like, any stage. Um, we might as well take a royal marriage here. Why not? Looks like we might spread Nunyadi dynasty to him. He could spread it around a bit, perhaps. Ah, it's got to be a Catholic. That's all I know. It's got to be a Catholic. Let's do it here. I think we could get Tuscany's vote pretty easily. Yep. If we got it with this much overextension, we should be good to lock that down. Alrighty, looking f less sketchy with our four votes. Royal marriage helps us uh, get Treyer's vote as well, even though he's not our religion. Don't need to spend money influencing his nation. Uh, oh, Aragon's getting wrecked by France. That France, dude. France is a beast. Oh my goodness. It's going to have French Canada. But once we revoke, he's going to be nothing to us, right? Just keep telling myself that. While our Ottoman spy network was discovered, I'll just spend my points there. And I'll check how large the Ottoman stack is. Predicted to be 23. Stronger than us. Let's go send some infantry out there. Oopsie daisies. can tick up our military but there's no there's no dude no uh global trade is going to spawn soon i suppose <sighs> russia let's just keep this damn advisor uh, you're killing my economy russia killing my economy 
that obviously helps as well with uh, Liberty Desire. Jeez, man, it helps out with our economy as well. I guess we just have to have that that two advisor. It's kind of sucky. We're certainly not as poor as we were when we were trying to have more troops and sustain the loyalists. The economy has improved. Let's look at it that way. A part in the back of my mind, though, I know that it part of the reason it's improved is because it's um. Because it is... Let's fabricate some claims on Poland. The war reparations. We have war reparations. Where should give us some money? 14.5 per year. <laughs> A lot of it's Ottomans, which is going to last some time, but some of it's not. That's... Yeah, if we don't get those war reparations, which they're not going to last forever, um, we're going to be bloody poor. Nice. Diplo points here. Love it. We're doing good on tech. We literally don't need that. I think it's time to accept Turkish. It's going to give a small, small emphasis on the small bonus to our economy from some taxes there. But uh, it's a good move for the future. Let's do some trading out some bigger loans for some smaller loans. Hinyard has the potential of spreading to Bohemia here and Trier. Interesting. What does Bohemia have apart from ourselves as allies? It's pretty trivial stuff going on for him. You can get yearly prestige or yearly legitimacy or mercantilism. Let's take mercantilism. It's all about that mercantilism. Attacker. Alright. Sweden is expanding south autonomously. I actually want to see that. That's good. So he called us in with favors. Nice. We can force religion on Liege. I wonder what we could do to to Bavaria. Um, I actually wanted to see exactly that. It's cool. Because... We are going to PU him at a later date, I suspect. I suspect that's why I say that. There's breast. Alrighty, so Cologne's on our side as well. Uh, I do kind of feel like we need to go help out. So typical, dude. These rebels don't seem to progress so much when I want them to spawn Ottomans so I can go walk around and kill a dude. Global trade in Genoa. Am I right? Wait, what? No way, in the English Channel? Oh, snap. Dude, this was worth way more than 30 earlier. Oh, well, no biggie. Global trade is one of those ones that spreads everywhere, especially Europe, uh, pretty easily. Cool. Let's have a look around here. I mean, we're so poor, though, dude. Lol. We're really poor, you know. Uh, it's just it's going to take more loans to embrace that. But it'll take... It's, it's a few years out yet before we accept... Yay, some population. Yes, please. We need those. Reducing over extension for reputation. We need that. Reputation's good. Oh, of course there's no infantry here. Um, okay, I might I might just leave it, considering there's Ottomans spawned. Let's just leave it. I need one stack out here to stabilize the region, but I am going to go help out. Of course, Russia is going to help out. That's true. Russia will do all of this work for me, actually. 
but he might be a bit derpy and walk up here where I'm sure the Swedes don't need help. So if this guy's not doing anything else, let's go... Um, I can't separate peace them and force their religion. Of course I can't. Because I'm not the war leader. Um, I'm going to get rid of this advisor, guys. The more expensive one. And... Uh, colonialism is going to make this more expensive. Let's take up. We are far ahead in military, though. I'm going to take war reparations. Uh, war, war taxes. Alrighty, so this is this war is not that significant, obviously. And uh, it's about time that I uh, call it an episode, guys. We're just going to chill at war here um, for the Swedish, where they expand, which is good to see, because we're going to pee you him at a much later date when liberty desire is not an issue. Once we integrate Russia, PU and Sweden, even if he had all of Scandinavia, he would be a joke in terms of liberty desire. And of course, the empire, very trivial uh, liberty desire in that situation, um, when you're, you get it via being the emperor. Um, so what I want to do now that we raised our war taxes, I'm going to begin my own war here against uh, Morocco. Milan's not going to back him up. He's two tech behind us. Quickly check his force limit. Oh, he's got 38,000. Uh, that's, that's not to be uh, taken that lightly. But these two will be fine, considering how much stronger we are than him. And I'm going to make sure to declare that war before we peace out here. To maintain the war um, taxes so that our economy is not quite so bad and um, certainly take his money which we'll get all of and uh, war taxes as well war reparations as well now there'll be an interesting choice in terms to, of what we take if we take this stuff uh, trade pulling from Sevilla would help out our economy a small amount but we have to be wary of if I did want to vassalize Castile What's going on with Great Britain here? He's allied to Castile. I think I'm I'm overthinking things with Diplo vassalizing Castile. We can just push up into Iberia and then uh, aggressively vassalize him if we want. So it's probably going to be profitable to lock down this region first. Although the, I do kind of want to push down south to give us continued opportunities of expansion. You know what? These provinces are really dirt cheap. I think I will do that actually. I think I'll push down Border Goret down here and we can uh, give us plenty of opportunities to expand into West Africa. I think that's the right move. It's not going to help us out that much here, guys. We're going to have to free up. Uh, like, we're pulling quite some trade from Ragusa anyway and um, collecting in, in Venice. Those are probably the best ways that we can influence our economy by trade, I suspect. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be getting another uh, merchant soon from Global Trade. When we embrace that, and uh, hopefully from our little cheeky colony, which is going to be here soon. Once I complete this, we can play, place one down in the Caribbean. And once I complete that, place another one down. And at least we'll be getting some payoff then, but hopefully it rapidly improves as we uh, we bulk that region out. I'm going to end the episode here, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying. We're about to go to War with Morocco next episode. I'll see you then next time.